Welcome to another episode of Radicards TV. In this episode, it is... Well, actually, I should probably state the date here. Today is... Saturday, January 11th, 2014. Today we went to Beverly Hills Sports Cards, a.k.a. California Sports Cards. And bought a few things. So, I'm going to go first, and then Anthony's going to sort of take it away. Alright? Good. Alright, so I you know I went through this uh, box of Thomas's and pulled out a few uh, cards that I already had, but I figured I'd bring them home anyway just to because I like them. Got another one of these uh, 1996, I believe it's 96, Donruss Elite, but it's the promo card. Frank Thomas. I have quite a few of these. I like this card a lot. Um, it's not as nice looking as the original. The original has like a it's like a hollow foil print on the back there with the serial number. So these are kind of cool. So there's that one. And then I picked up a another one of uh, 94 Pinnacle Artist Proof, Frank Thomas. Picked up a 96 Leaf Gold Stars, Frank Thomas. Number to 2500. So this one I think I needed a replacement. I feel like the one I have is ever so slightly damaged. So it's kind of a nice addition. <clears throat> and I went through some other star um, players' uh, boxes and, and pulled out some interesting some interesting finds here. I believe this is um, 1998 Pinnacle Plus Artist Proof, Andy Pettit. This is really nice looking cards. This is a uh, 1999 Prism Holographic Blue Armas Ramirez, number to, number to 80. Those are kind of cool. Picked up a uh, 1997 Score Artist Proof Rock and Fire Hideo Nomo. Don't mind the price tag. I like these cards a lot. These are these are pretty fun. So these would be nice additions to my um, non Thomas uh, collection. And then um, I bought some packs with the hopes of maybe acquiring a uh, 24 karat gold. I bought 11 packs of 1999 Fleer Brilliance. I'm really hoping to well just sort of testing my chances of, of potentially pulling a 24 karat gold parallel number to 24. They're very, very hard uh, to to get. So hopefully I'll, you know, maybe review these on, on Radic cards or something uh, in the future. So we'll see what happens. How many of those did you pick up? I got 11 of them. Not bad. Should be fun. This should be a fun break. Also, there's the addition of um, blue. Um, there's blue parallels in this as well as gold parallels. The golds are numbered to 99. Blues don't have a serial numbering. There's the parallel. And then I believe um, there's a... There's an insert set called Pulsar that comes out of this as well. Yeah, Pulsars. And then the Shining shining Star Parallels of Pulsars. Um, I think that's right. Is that right? Yeah, it was Shining Stars, and then there's the Pulsar Parallels of the Shining Stars. So, for example, um, the Pulsars have like a refractive sort of technology on them. They're really amazing looking cards. And there's the Illuminators, and that's it, really. Those are the insert sets. So I look forward to opening these and seeing what I get. That's it for me. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Anthony? What did you get today? <clears throat> Pretty slim day for me, I think. <laughs> Again, uh, the main focus is on uh, on vintage. That's my thing. But I um, picked up some common guys. Um, Again, I was at to send two or three to a guy, to a player, to get autographed. And I uh, so I just got to finish up. I think this is the second or third Dick Billings that I have. Let me get this out to him. A bunch of guys that I'm sure nobody really heard of. And today, I think a lot of the guys that I got only have a few cards. Period. Uh, Bill Dillman. I have a 69. All ready for him. Tommy Dean, 70 tops. Nice little pose there. And I always think that these are cool. They, uh, this is a 69. Jim Brighton or Britain. I love the uh, the hands over the head. There's not so many pitchers who actually throw 
when they go into that that wind up with their hands over their head anymore. So I always I like, like that the pose is is there. I think it's pretty neat. I feel like Hideo Nomo was one of those guys that did that. Yeah, he did it. I know Kershaw does it. Kershaw does it too. Uh, a lot of guys just you know stretch right. out the leg and don't really go through the the hello. What do they call the hello blue of, uh, <laughs> of doing that? And uh, there's another Britain. And uh, Ron Reed is on there. He also signs the 68 tops. You're gonna get both those to sign? Yeah. Ron Reed charges. I think he charges like 10 bucks, so I'm gonna have to pay for that one. <laughs> Not too happy. Tom Butters. It's a cool name. He has a uh, his rookie card. I think it's a 66. I'm thinking. Well, that's a 65, so it wouldn't. Be it might be a 60, 64. 64. You know, it was, it was all weird. You know, a lot of guys had like two rookie cards back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Lou Pinella has right. a 64, a 68, and a... I feel like there's one more in there. I did a post on Rata Cards a couple years ago about that. Like a little dual face on all those? Yeah, a 64 is his actual rookie card. Then 68 and I, maybe 67 were also... He was on those cards as well. So it's weird to see that he had three, technically, three rookie cards. It's weird, huh? But he's actually only has one rookie card. But Tom Butters, on his other card, I think um, I already got the first guy signed on it. Uh, Bob Pretty. So I'm going to get that out to him. Nice. Um, last week, I think it was last week, I picked up a, a Don Demeter, a Bell uh, potato oh, yeah. chip, a beat down Bell potato chip. So here's a 58. Stick that in there with it. Um, These are cool, 53 tops. I, I love this set. And this card has a nice big bend in it. It's a Bob Burkowski. I got it for a good price. And uh, Bob is an older gentleman now. Of course, you know, from the 53 set. And he has a beautiful signature. So I, I don't know how many Bob Burkowski cards there are. I want to say that this might be his only one. Really? Don't, yeah. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure, though. There's a Bob Burkowski right there. Oh, that's who it was. Yeah, he does have another <laughs> one. You're right. You know what? My bad. He does. 54 and There's a 54 also of his. He does have more. As Dick Bokelman only has one for oh, 53. They, okay. they, they didn't have it. I was bummed out. And uh, Tony Bartiromi, or, or Bartirome, he is a, uh, this, is, this is his only card on this 53 tops. <clears throat> he actually later on stayed with the pirate organization. He's a pirate there. And uh, he was, I believe, their head trainer. So he's pictured on some team cards. Uh, I know on the, the 71 and I think the 73. He is uh, not in uniform with the Bucks, but he uh, he's in the team picture or on the side as the head trainer. So I have a couple. I have a 73 Opeachy uh, Pirate Team card that I'm going to include this with. And it's kind of neat. I don't have too many trainer autographs, but <laughs> he was a player at one time. Nice. Also, Joe Presco. He, um, he doesn't have any Tiger cards, although I believe he did play one year with Detroit. Um, got me a little Bowman guy going here. Was that 51? Is this, this is a, uh, 50, 52, 52, yeah, the facsimile, yeah, and a, uh, another Presco, 54, so, good for you, get these guys out, I also, um, what else happened, oh yeah, I looked out, I mean, look out, <clears throat> I'm always looking for autographs, and I'm doing a 76 set that I've, you know, I've, Maybe I'm halfway done with it. And, uh... You're really already that far along? I would guess, yeah. I haven't done the full count, I'm guessing. is the 76 set, like, uh, over 600 cards? Yeah. Is it over And then there's traded. Cards? Yeah, and then there's the traded. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's a huge set. So I might be... Oh yeah, the Willie Randolph is in there. Even the Oscar Gamble is in that set. Mm -hmm. The traded set. Those guys do private signings, though, so... Those Gamble does around. private signing? Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. But there are a couple guys, um, that I don't have, and I don't usually buy autographs i mean if, if somebody charges you know i'll include five bucks or if there's a signing i'll go to the signing and um but i don't usually pick up autographs on ebay or the secondary market unless it's for my 76 set so pete falcone who uh is a tough signature um i think it's falcone or falcone i'm not sure which is funny i don't know i'm pretty sure and just it just came to me i think it's the 81 fleer set there's a um pete falcone is in, in, I think in the uh, in the clubhouse in front of his locker, signing baseball cards. Really? I think that's what his card is of him signing baseball cards, which I'm pretty sure I might be I might be mistaken. But that'd be interesting that uh, the guy pictured signing baseball cards doesn't sign very often. 
So I had to pick this guy up and they just had a box of signed cards there at the shop, which I've never gone through or knew that it even existed. And as I was, we were getting, we were wrapping up, the guy's like, you ever checked out our, our autograph box? So I had to go through that. Really good stuff. And I found it, Jesus Alou in there. Who, he doesn't, what's his signature potential? Um, is he tough? He's pretty tough. He's yeah. an older dude now. I'm not too sure how old he is. Drafted in 59. He's born in 42. He's not super old. He's about 70, a little over 70. But he, um, I think he still, he lives in Dominican Republic, so it's kind of tough to get to him. But he doesn't sign very often. At least I haven't seen any private signings or anything. So I just picked this guy up for my 76 set. And um, I go to spring training every year, and I get a lot of in-person autographs. Um, I go down to Tempe, and a buddy and I, we do a lot of uh, angels. And we've seen the A's a few times, but... Um, I can't get Bob Melvin, and he's not a good signer. He doesn't sign through the mail very often, um, few and far between, but he played for the Tigers at one point. So I saw this in that autograph box, and I had to pick it up, and um, I'm done with him now. You came up on that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was excited. Pretty good price for those guys, too. Really good price. And then um, we were um, we went to lunch after. <laughs> I had to grab a little corned beef, and Patrick was thumbing through my cards. Okay. And uh, we just got in the car right now and to uh, to do some filming. And I went through my cards and I said, "What the expletive is this?" And then there was then he slipped in a nice Andrew Miller auto, which I have an Andrew Miller auto. I don't have one on on card auto, so this is I'm stoked. Thanks, dude. You're welcome. It's good stuff. I'm yeah, excited. glad it, you know. Glad that's in your collection, man. So you got something else in here now. Uh, I think I had something else that I might have dropped. I'm not sure. Something else has dropped down there. So as he's looking for that, we can talk about something else for a little bit. So we're thinking about doing like a Orange County shop run. There's some shops down there um, that we'd like to check out and sort of do another video of this in a couple weeks. But um, where are we talking? Oh, this is one. Here it is right here. Tell me about that. This is my, I just, I think I, we talked about this in our last video. I just started doing, um, I'm a big Laker fan and uh, Clipper fans think it's pretty funny to be a Laker fan now. But I'm a big Laker fan and I'm just starting to work on on-card Laker autos. And uh, Fisher's the man. So I love these autographics, these Skybox. I think that they look super cool. I think that they've, uh, in the past couple years, tried to bring them back. But of course, the late 90s is good times for a Laker fan. So I picked up this Fisher. He has a nice, clean autograph with his little number two on there. So I'm excited to add this to the collection. He's one of my all time favorite Lakers. I think I have three or four Fishers now. I'll have to post some on the thread yeah you should you should you know like um what are some of the recent more important mail days you've gotten like in the last week or so have you gotten some cards in the mail that were autographed through the mail i did i got a uh i got a little a small lot of um sam perkins autographs another one of the uh I think it's a 99, another Skybox, like this guy. And um, that one was on card, which I had to get. Um, I picked up a 92, 93, I think I showed you earlier. Um, NBA Hoops. Is it Hoops? No, Skybox. Skybox. Uh, Magic Johnson. Uh, it's not certified, but it looks really good to me. Um, and I just, I, I thought it would go a lot higher than it did, price-wise. And uh, I lucked out, and I got that for a pretty good deal I'm, I'm excited about that to add a magic as a laker fan or as a basketball fan in general growing up in the 80s adding a magic johnson autograph to your collection i think is huge i mean he's the man i mean it's how does it work i mean we, we go jordan and then what and magic and bird right there like as or far the as household, like, household names? names yeah we're having a conversation about this over lunch that that you know in sports there are certain names that pop and everybody knows who you're talking about and and, and you know we're talking specifically about baseball and then we were sharing it with basketball and then some with football and then going into to hockey. But I think with basketball, I think it would be Jordan. And I'm pretty sure that, that yeah, you know, Bird and Johnson would be right up there. Um, I, I feel like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar might be in that list at right. some point. Um, Aside from being a great player, that's just kind of like one of those names that people know. You know, it's kind of an odd name. The, the name is around, so you hear about it, right? Jordan, like... You hear his name somewhere somehow if you're if you know anything about sports or if you've ever turned on the TV or anything. You know, with baseball, we were talking about, you know, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, 
Joe DiMaggio, Ted, Mil Ted Williams, these are all names that I feel like are household names. Even Ken Griffey Jr. and Cal Ripken, I feel like are household names. Nowadays. Yeah, more modernized. Modernized yeah. versions of them. And I think in football, I feel like household name would be like Joe Montana. You know? Would yeah. there be another one? I mean, I feel like maybe Elway um, would be Marino's a household name. is a nice zippy name that Marino's. I think a lot of people know. I don't know about new guys as much. I mean, I like feel like household it's, names. It's getting, I feel like Peyton Manning is going to be a household name if he's not already there, you know? Yeah, just Manning in general, I think, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's got a family. He's got family ties in football. I think in hockey, a name that always comes to me is Wayne Gretzky. You I know? think that's the only name that comes to a lot of people, right? right? So that's the household name in hockey. This is my opinion, so right. um, it's just what I think about. But I think, yeah, I think that the, the Skybox card you got of Magic Johnson, he's in his, like, Tux, I guess it would be, or a suit. He's in a suit. I think it's a photo from, I think he did um, the cover of GQ right around that time. Oh, really? So they could just use that as a card. It's pretty, I, I remember pulling that card in a pack as, as a basketball fan in the early 90s, and uh, I was stoked on it. So that I saw it online, I was like, I got I got a bid on this. But like I said, it was like, I felt lucky to, to get it for a decent price. Right, 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 totally. And you know what's funny about that set? You know, like, like we were talking about at lunch, like sets that people collect, you know? So, like, what are some sets that... So, like, why did you start collecting the 76 autograph set? Why was it that set? Me, personally, uh, yeah. when I was a kid, and I'm thinking, like, 1986, I'd already been collecting for two, three years, and um, the first time I ran across a 76 Topps card, I was blown away that I had a card that was, like, 10 years old. I thought that that was an old card, and even then, I thought it was vintage, and I started picking up some 76s. They had some cool colors, and... There's, you know, I had a bunch of Tigers from that time, and uh, as I got older, I, I feel like, to me, that 76 is kind of the cutoff, like, as far as vintage goes. Like, it kind of comes up to 76, people want to add 77, 78 sometimes, but as far as I'm concerned, 76 is the end of the vintage era. Really? A lot of people say that 74 would be that end. These, you know, 74 is a cutoff. Like, we don't... Right. I see a lot of signs on sports card shops, you know, it's like, we buy 74 and back. Right. Or we buy up to 73. So it's interesting you bring that up. And I think, to me, like, when I think of 81 tops, I think of vintage. Right. And yeah, I think yeah. it's the baseball cap on the card in the corner. I love mm. the design. And I remember being in, you know, in, in elementary school in, like, 92 and, and thinking to myself, you know, like, looking at a common player from 81 tops and be like, wow, that's a really old looking card. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, you know, as, as I got older, I picked up a blackboard, a 70, 71 tops, and I was like, that's a really old looking card. And I remember looking, I think it was Al Harboski, rookie card. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, books for something. It must be worth a lot. Like, it must be valuable like, <laughs> to, to people, to collectors. So, yeah, I think it's funny, you know, you, you bring up that, that that's kind of like your nostalgia. That's what you brings you back to, like, thinking about and being reminded of what it was like to be a kid. Some oh, people yeah. might even say like the '85 tops. Um, is is I, I know some people that, that that collect that set because that was the one that they started collecting. You know, that was the one that that's the year they started collecting. I started in '88, so by default, the '88 tops set has like that to me. But that set is is you know, there's not a lot of value there on the '88 tops. No, set. right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like hard for me to want to like interact with that set past like a. Tom Glavin rookie, or uh, um, who's the guy who has the white lettered variation at the end of the set? Oh, I don't know. Oh man, it's like I can't think of it now. But um, I actually wrote about it on 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 Rata Cards a while back. That variation. There's some cool variations in that set. Al Leader has a has a two different pictures in his rookie card mm -hmm. in that set. Um, but I don't know. I don't think of 88 Tops as really being vintage. <laughs> I think the cutoff maybe would be 76 for a lot of people. I mean, it's still got great color. You know, it's it's produced. It's available. Um, I think it's cool that you're putting that together. Now, are, you haven't put those in binders yet, but you're thinking about putting them in a binder? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. I think I'm to the point now where I want to start putting them in a binder, and I can flip through it and just easily enjoy it. Rather than right now, all my autographs, I put them in uh, penny sleeve, then semi-rigid, then in alphabetical order. Right. So just for easy access, you know, just uh, for storage purposes, it works, you know, in, in boxes. But um, in a book, I think that'll be nice and pretty. And even I think I'm gonna start um, putting all the 76s that I have, even if they're not signed yet, just so I can always know instead of having an empty spot there. Oh yeah, this guy needs to go to the mail. You oh know nice. What I mean? Yeah, that's a good that's a good strategy. And I can still enjoy the card itself, even though it's not 
awesome and autographed yet. Now, do you have a full set with and without autographs? No, I don't. I mean, I, I, I say I probably have 85% of the set, period. Mm. Um, which is a good chunk. Mm -hmm. Those traded guys, I never really picked up too many of the traded when I was young. You know, those traded are odd. You know, they have that little, like, uh, mm. looks like a little piece of newspaper clipping <laughs> or something on there. Right. I wonder, is, is that the one that, that Steve Carlton was being traded over to the Phillies? Was that that year? I don't remember. I know, like, uh, Fergie Jenkins is there. He was with the Lowlich. Rangers when, when Fergie was being traded over? Yeah, I think he he uh, has a Cubs card, and I think he went over to the Rangers on that one. Because he was traded again in 82, um, I think, back to the back Cubs. Back to the Cubs, was yeah. It? So, After he spent some time. maybe he was, I know he spent some time somewhere in there with the Rangers. Yeah, and I think that that was the 76 card. Was it the Rangers? Yeah. But I, don't quote me on that. I'm just trying to dig up files from my brain about what I've seen. And I have that 82 Tops traded card with him, and I believe it is Cubs. A lot of times, well, players will will retire with their home team. Right. Reggie Jacks retired with the A's. You know, he got traded back to the A's in 87. 87 Tops traded. Um, I think Fitch it was easy for guys. I think what, what it used to be is, is the guy was a little bit past his prime. He probably didn't want to hang it up yet. And uh, it would be easy for him to go back to the hometown team that, you know, he started with. They'll be willing to give him, you know, a few shekels to... To extend his career just a year or two, and uh, he'll still get some praise there. The fans will still be, you know, losing it whenever you know was on the rubber or, or you know stepped up to the plate. It's a good point. I never really think about that. You know, when Griffey went back to the Mariners and then retired, I feel like they gave him, you know, pretty decent retirement celebration. Was it? I mean, oh, to yeah. me, it it happened quickly. Like I remember that summer. I think it was that summer, whenever that was. Whenever that was happening, I remember it, it just was a surprise. Like it just happened and it was over. Yeah, well, I don't think he didn't finish out, like, the year. He was right. signed through the end of the year, and he, he called it quits a little early. Which is, what and what, what do you think motivates people just to I think it was another morning, and, and I like, think you know, he was I'm bummed out. that it was like, I'm injured again, and I don't oh, I don't want to do this to the fans. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, I might come back, I'm on the disabled list, uh, got to do a rehab start in AAA, and I, I think he just said, forget it, I'm done. I think, you know, we were talking about Hall of Fame. Uh, Frank Thomas made the Hall of Fame this past week. Same with Tom Glavin and, and, and uh, Greg Maddox. So we're really excited about that. Not At least good. I am. And I know Frank Thomas, I've been waiting for him to make the Hall for several years. And I was really happy to hear that news. And I did, it wasn't a surprise to me. I, I, I knew he was going to be a shoe in I just <laughs> felt that way. But we were talking about Hall of Fame guys and, um, you know, Griffey being a first ballot Hall of Famer. So what do you think, Anthony? Well, Griffey is definitely a first ballot Hall of That's Famer. That's what I think. <laughs> uh, there's And there's a few guys that I have felt that. I mean, Pudge is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. You think so? I, he has to be. I think he's like one of the greatest defensive catchers ever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, his career was long. He had an MVP in there. No uh, no World Series or anything. Just Oh, yeah, he did. He did with the Marlins. He won a World Series. But um, Piazza, you know, speaking of catchers and first ballot, I think he should have been in the Hall of Fame this year. Um, I... I the longevity of his career, the, the numbers he put up, he's the greatest offensive catcher of all time. I think he should definitely have been in there. And I don't know the, the specifics right now, like the um, the percentages and everything, so I don't know what he missed it by. But he's definitely going to get in the next couple of years. I mean, I think he has a pretty good chance in the next couple of years. I think he's one of those one of my favorite catchers. You know, A guy like Craig Biggio just missed it by under, under up a percentage, I think it was. Craziness. Some yeah. small, tiny little fraction. And he's got over 3,000 hits, was it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so I think he's, I, you know, maybe next year. Next year's we've got Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, and who is Smoltz. And Smoltz. And then the following year, Griffey is his first year of induction. I think that's right. Um, so I think that Johnson is definitely a first ballot. Without a doubt. He was a freak. Pedro and, and Smoltz, I think they have a pretty darn good chance of being first ballot Hall of Famers. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know? Um... So I wanted to go back and, and, and for a second and talk about some, you know, an old set that I started. I'm sort of like thinking about working on, maybe not to any real, like, firm degree of commitment on building the set right now, but at some point in the future I'd like to um, work on it. So Anthony and I were talking about sets that people commonly collect, you know, like 52 tops, the T206s, uh, you know, um, 40 and 48 leaf or whatever. Um, and even those those are you know vintage and very high end sets. Yeah, I feel they're pretty mainstream. They're very mainstream, and they're available. I mean, stuff I am, we're going to talk about here in a minute is also available, but I think it's less popular. 
it's, it's very almost underground, if you will. In fact, it's something I didn't even realize existed until summer of 2012 when I was at the National. I came across one of these things and I bought it on a whim. Um, a Mickey Cochran is what I bought. It comes from the 1931 W517 set. And they categorized that because the existence, the origin, to my knowledge, was it was unknown. But they're strip cards, so people would like cut them out. So that the sizing is varied amongst card per card. Um, but, you know, you've got the guys, Babe Ruth is in there. I mean, technically speaking, because this is before the Gaudi card came out, it would consider his, it'd be considered as XRC. Um, but I think because he had so many other cards before the Gaudi card, all those would be technically considered XRCs. But I can't really, I can't really say that. I can't really subscribe to that sort of mindset because, you know, he had the, I think it's a 1990 news, what is it? New sporting news card where he's pitching for the, the Red Sox. Oh, 19? 1919, is, is that it? What it was? Yeah, with, it's like a skinnier, yeah. smaller card, a thicker, smaller, bigger, smaller card. When I say that, I mean it's not like two and a half by three and a half, but it, it's smaller than that, but it's also bigger than T206. So I believe that would be his technical rookie card, I think. Anyway, so this is 31, so this is quite a few years later, but um, the cards, they're like postcards, like five by seven. They come in different background colors too, like it'll have a uh, feature like a not a black and white picture of the player but like a green and white picture like a rose version like a almost like a matte finish you know these different colors so it's a really colorful set and I believe there are like a little over 50 cards in the set um, and and you know the roof in the set I can get for like well currently just a couple of hundred bucks but it's, it has less marquee value than say the Gaudi which is in the thousands or more mainstream issues so um, it's funny that, that what makes a mainstream issue is, is the licensing that has with a certain company that has so much marketing potential right. to, to, you know, national awareness. But when you have something like a, uh, a strip card or, or something that was released in, say, a newspaper or something, it has much less uh, market awareness, but the scarcity might be more than the mainstream releases, which technically speaking should make the card more valuable and high grade. <laughs> right. But it's just not that way. Because when people know about something, I feel like that, it's going to have more value just by default. So, for example, like, think of, like, your favorite soda pop brand. You know, probably it's a mainstream brand. It might not be, but probably, you know, there's a good chance it might be. And you've had another soda pop brand that's not a mainstream brand. It might be even better tasting than the mainstream brand. But because it doesn't get the market awareness, it doesn't get the same um, uh, love, if you will. That, that, that say your your mainstream soda prop brand brandman. I might be tangenting on this, but this is kind of like how I see lesser known sports card sets. Is that technically speaking, they should be more valuable, but they're oftentimes um, just not. But that's not always the case. There are some that are very very scarce and very very valuable. Anyway, um, I think thoughts? that's I think that's super interesting. <laughs> I, I think that that set will be fun, especially. I think storage wise will be tough. But if you get them all slabbed, I think it'll be really awesome to have them in their own box. That would you say they're five by seven? They're about five by seven, roughly. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. But then there's some standard deviation there because people cut them uh, against the edges of the frames or a little bit out of the frame. So a lot of off-centered copies. But I think it's really cool to think about a set that's been interacted with the market. The market's touched the card and cut it and like created this this card to be sold. True. So some of them have like. Um, text like syntax on the borders like one says strike i think the babe Ruth card we saw today on ebay had it said strike out yeah, on the top I think so yeah so those are kind of very unique cards to have uh, kind of something strange there's so much of that i'm still learning about these sort of almost like i guess pre-war would it be oh yeah definitely yeah a lot of the stuff i'm still learning about so there's just a lot of um unknown information there and the information i can't can't really divulge because i don't know <laughs> right but, but definitely kind of cool that I got the Mickey Cochran. I'm thinking about either grading it or just having authenticated. Either way, I think it looked good in the slab. Hall of Famer. Yeah, you know what's funny is I heard about Mickey Cochran is that, and I probably said this in another video, is that, um, and don't quote me on this, this is just what I heard. I heard he was the only guy that attended Ty Cobb's funeral. Really? Yeah. Like yeah. A, a, As a Tiger fan, I, I don't know that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that either. That true. Yeah, I feel like, you know, there was some you know, friendship that existed there between he and Ty Cobb, and maybe that was Ty Cobb's only friend. I don't, I don't quite know. I just that's what I've heard from some people. 
or a person that I had interacted with over the past year or something. So um, it's kind of interesting. That's a good one to start with, though. I dig that. How many, you said it's like in the 50s? Like it's like 54, 56 cards. I think it's 54 cards. That would be a nice hunt. Yeah, and it's expensive. I'm not really, you know, in a position right now to, to work toward that as a goal. You know, as I said in another video, that the, the time and money I spend on something that's not Thomas is stuff I could spend on working on my Thomas collection. Uh, but at some point, I'd like to create other projects, and that would be one of them that I'd work on. The other thing about Mickey Cochran, too, is that um, Mickey Mantle was named after Mickey Cochran. You know that? Really? Yeah. So it's kind of cool that, to think about. Um, Mick, I guess I guess it's Mickey Mantle's father... His favorite baseball player was Mickey Cochran, so he named his son after Mickey Cochran. It's That's kinda, pretty cool. Kind of cool. Yeah. So I think, you know, I read that book, Seven, The Mickey Mantle Story. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a piece in that about what I just said, so that's kind of cool. Kind of interesting. Dig it. Yeah. Well, you have anything else to say, Anthony? No, I think we're losing light. <laughs> we're running out of daylight here. Yeah, my, also, my, my sunglasses weren't, weren't needed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that very often. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks, man. Good day. Good day today. Thank you for watching another episode of Radicards TV. Until next time, enjoy collecting.